Hola, ¿cómo están? This is going to be our last lesson about Honduras. So we've been talking about nos conocemos, getting to know each other. We started out by learning how to greet each other, saludos y despedidas. And we talked about hola and adios and words like señor, señora, and asking the question, ¿cómo te llamas? And answering it with me llamo. And then we talked about la familia, people in our family, and we learned about hermano, hermana. We talked about how words that are for boys end with the letter O and words that are for girls end with the letter A. And then we were talking about singular and plural, singular, one person, and plural, many people. And we learned that we need to put S's on the end of words if we want to make them plural. We've also been talking about las vocales, the vowels, and we learned the vowel sounds a and e. And we've also looked at different places in Honduras, like Tegucigalpa, the capital, and Copan, um, that big pyramid that the Mayan people built more than 3,000 years ago. So lots of cool places in Honduras. So for this last lesson in Honduras, we're going to talk about an island called Roatán. It's an island off the coast of Honduras that's part of the country, but it's its own separate island. And so we're going to keep talking about O's and A's and S's at the end of words and how those things work as we ask this question, ¿Cómo son? ¿Cómo son? ¿Cómo son means what are they like? Describe things for me. ¿Cómo son? ¿Cómo son? How are they? What are they like? Okay. So, ¿Cómo son las playas? What are beaches like? Be careful with that word playa. We have in Spanish something called cognates. Some of you might remember that a cognate is a word in Spanish that looks or sounds like a word in English. We have lots and lots of words like that. Words like elefante means elephant. That's a word in Spanish that looks like a word in English, and so that makes it a lot easier for us to learn. There's words like chocolate is chocolate, or mapa is map, things like that. There's lots of words that look very, very similar in English or in Spanish. But there are also words that look like words in English, but don't mean what you think they mean. And this word playa is one of them. The word playa looks like the word play, but it actually doesn't have anything to do with playing. Last lesson, we learned the word juego. Juego means I play. Do you remember that? Juego con mis amigos. I play with my friends. So this word playa, even though it looks like the English word play, actually means beach. So be careful. We call words like that false cognates. False cognate is a word that looks like an English word, but it doesn't actually mean what you think it means. There are a few of those in Spanish, so just be careful of false cognates. Sometimes they might kind of lead you in the wrong direction, so just be careful. Most of the time, when a word looks like an English word, it means what you think it does. But every once in a while, there are a few false cognates like this one that we have to watch out for. So, ¿Cómo son las playas? means, what are the beaches like? Describe the beaches. What are they like? Now, first thing that I notice is that the word playas has an S on the end of it, so that means we're talking about more than one plural. So we have to add that S to the end. But I also noticed that the word playa ends with the letter A. Now here's something that's a little bit confusing. In Spanish, it's not just people that can be boys or girls. Everything is either a boy or a girl word. It doesn't mean that the beach is a girl just because it ends with an A, but we just decided that we needed to have two groups of words in Spanish. And we could have called them red words and blue words, or we could have called them group A words and group B words, or we could have said these are square words and circle words. But for some reason, they decided we're going to call them boy words and girl words. It really has nothing to do with being a boy and being a girl. It just happens to be the name that they chose. So every word in Spanish is either a boy word or a girl word, even a word like beach. 
that has nothing to do with if it's a boy or a girl, but it happens to be, can you guess, is it a boy word or a girl word? It's a girl word because it ends with the letter A. So that really only matters to me that this is a girl word because in Spanish, we have to make everything match. That's called agreeing. So look at what Kate is saying down here. Kate is holding the ball on the beach and she says, Las playas son divertidas. That means the beaches are fun. But look at how many of these words match. We have the word las ends in as. We have the word playas ends with as. And we have the word divertidas ends with as. Everything matches. Las playas divertidas. It's very, very easy to write a song or write a poem in Spanish because words are supposed to rhyme with each other if we're doing it correctly. So las playas divertidas all kind of sound the same and that means we're doing it correctly. So what that sentence says is the beaches are fun. But in Spanish, we need to put an S on the word the and we need to put an S on the word fun. We don't do that in English. We would just say the beaches are fun. But in Spanish, we're actually saying thus beaches are funs. Isn't that funny? So it's important for us to know that the word playa ends with an A. It's a girl word because we need to make all those other words end with A as well. And if we want to talk about more than one, if we want to talk about plural, we have to add, add an S, not just to the word playa, but to all the other ones too. Las playas son divertidas. Okay, so that's an important thing to remember in Spanish. We call that agreement. And when we talk about agreement, it means that we're making all the words match like that. We don't ever want to see one word that ends with an A, but then the next word ends with OS or something like that. We want all the words to be the same. So if one word ends in AS, we want the rest to end with AS as well. Okay, so las playas son divertidas. The beaches are fun. But then we see this sentence that says, Roatan es una isla. Las playas son divertidas. Okay, so there we have it again, that it's all matching. But in the first sentence, Roatan es una isla, that means Roatan is an island. This time we're not talking about plural words, we're talking about singular words. Roatan is just one island, but it has many beaches plural. Okay, so we need to pay attention to, are we talking about one thing or two things, singular or plural, and are we talking about boy words that end in O, or are we talking about girl words that end in A? It's really important to pay attention to those little details like that. So let's learn all about la isla de Roatan. La Isla, the island. How about that word isla? Does that look like a cognate word? Does it kind of look like the word island in English? Kind of. It's the first half of the word island, right? If we added an ND to the end, we would get island. But in Spanish, we say isla, isla. So that's a cognate word, isla. So here's Kate and she says, me gusta la isla. La isla es bonita. I like the island. The island is beautiful. So are we talking about something singular or plural? It's singular. I don't see any S's at the end of those words. La isla bonita. No S. Okay. Is it a boy word or a girl word, the word isla? It's a girl word, so it ends with A. So I'm going to make all those words end in A. La isla bonita. See how they all match? That's what we mean by agreement. They all match each other. La isla bonita. La isla es bonita. But look at what Becky says. Becky says, las playas son bonitas. See how many things changed? Are we talking about something singular or plural this time? Now we're talking about plural. 
So we added S's to our words, but not just the word playas has an S, also the word las and also the word bonitas. Okay, so we make all the words agree. And then the other word is a verb. That's our action word. So in the first sentence, it says, la isla es bonita. The island is beautiful. That's singular verb. But in the next sentence, it says, las playas son bonitas. The beaches are beautiful. That's our plural verb, right? We can't say the island are beautiful. That doesn't work. And we can't say the beaches is beautiful. That doesn't work. So even in English, we have to agree our nouns and our verbs, our things and our actions have to match together or else it just doesn't sound right, right? So that's what we're doing here. We're making everything agree. So let's read through it one more time. Me gusta la isla. I like the island. La isla es bonita. Las playas son bonitas. The island is beautiful and the beaches are beautiful. Muy bien. So, la isla es bonita. It agrees. Las playas son bonitas. Those agree. Okay, now you try it. Ready? La isla es bonita. Las playas son bonitas. Okay, so we always want our words to rhyme. Playas bonitas. We don't want to say something like playas bonito. That doesn't match. Those words don't agree with each other. We want them to be almost the same. Playas bonitas. Isla bonita. Okay, that's agreement. Muy bien. So we've talked about las vocales a and e. We talked about the letters A and E. Those are two vowel sounds in Spanish. And we've talked about how vowels in Spanish never change their sound. Doesn't matter if they're at the beginning of the word or the end of the word or the middle of the word. They're never silent. They always say their name. Doesn't matter what letter they're next to. They always, always make the sound of their name. So A, E are the first two vowels. The next vowel we call I, but in Spanish they call it E. Oh man, isn't that kind of confusing? The letter that we call A, they call that one A. Ah. The letter that we call E, they call A. And the letter that we call I, they call E. So it's a little bit jumbled up that gets a little confusing. But once you get those three letters straight, it'll make reading Spanish super easy. But it is a little confusing that we have a, e, e instead of a, e, i. Okay, so whenever we see the letter i, we're going to say e, e. So this guy is called an iguana. Even in English, we call it an iguana, right? Not an iguana. We call it an iguana. Iguana is a Spanish word, iguana. And then this is a isla, isla. So in English we say island, we pronounce that like the letter I, but not in Spanish. We got to remember that I's say e, isla. We have insectos. Is that a cognate word? Does that look like English? It does look like the English word for insects. We just have to remember that we're not going to say that I like a I sound like we do in English. We're going to say it like a E sound. Insectos. Insectos. Insects. And then we have invierno. Two I's in that word. Invierno. Invierno means winter. Winter. Invierno. Okay. Try saying these words after me. Ready? Iguana. Isla, insectos, invierno. Excelente. All right. See if we can say this little rhyme down here. This is a silly little poem. It says, A iris la iguana le gusta el invierno. B 
vive en una isla con muchos insectos. Lots of E words in there. So it says, Iris, the iguana, likes the winter. She lives on an island with lots of insects. All kinds of I words. See if you can say it with me. Ready? A Iris, la iguana, le gusta el invierno. Vive en una isla con muchos insectos. So did you see all the A's, the E's, and the I's in all of those words? We have to remember that they always make their same sound. A, E, I. No matter what word we see them in, they always say A, E, I. If we can remember those three sounds, that will really, really help us to read in Spanish. Okay? Muy bien. Let's keep going. Si sí o no. Tell me if these words begin with that E sound. The first word is a picture of an igloo. Igloo. Does that start with the E sound? Si. Sí. Igloo. Igloo starts with that E sound. How about escalera? Escalera. Does that start with that E sound? Uh -uh. That starts with that E sound. Escalera. Escalera. How about iman? Does that start with the E sound? Iman. Si, sí, I hear an E at the beginning of that word. Iman. Iman. How about ensalada? Does that begin with the E sound? Ensalada. No, doesn't start with E. Starts with E. Ensalada. Ensalada. Muy bien. Bueno. La visita a Honduras. So now we're going to wrap it all up. Let's see how good your memory is. Can you remember what did they do first? ¿Qué hicieron primero? Primero. Where did they go first? ¿A dónde fueron? Primero. Primero fueron a Copán. Remember? And they saw the pyramid that was like 3,000 years old. Perfecto. Después, ¿a dónde fueron? Where did they go next? Do you remember? Next, they went to Tegucigalpa, la capital de Honduras. Where did they go after that? El Parque Nacional de Pico Bonito, the national park. Remember when they were playing with their friends? Al Parque Nacional. And finally, where did we go today? La Isla. Do you remember the island's name? Roatan. Roatan. Excelente. So now we're going to finish up our workbook pages for this chapter. We're going to open up Abre a la Página Siete. Can you find page seven in your workbook? And it says, Encierra en un círculo Las palabras que empiezan con I. We're going to circle the words that start with that E sound. So they circled for us. Isla starts with an E sound. How about escalera? Does that start with the E sound? Nope. It's a little confusing because it looks like an E in English, but it doesn't sound like that in Spanish. The E sound we write with the letter I. I. Okay, so we're not going to circle number two. How about iguana? Do we circle that one? Si, sí, iguana begins with E. How about iman? Iman begins with E. How about iglu? Iglu begins with E. How about arbol? Arbol does not begin with E. Okay, so whenever we see that letter I, don't forget we're going to make a E sound. Excelente. Let's turn the page. Página ocho. Page number eight. We are going to put these pictures in order. So what comes first? Do they say hola or do they say adiós? I think they're already in order. Ordena número uno. We're going to write a number one next to that picture. 
and numero dos next to that picture. And you can color that in when you feel like it. You can make that look really pretty, like they're in Honduras with lots of bright colors, blue sky, some palm trees in the background, lots of pretty colors in there. So, uno, dos. First, we say hola, and después we say adios, adios. Excelente. So that's the end of our chapter. And whenever we get to the end of a country, talking about the the country of Honduras, we're going to do a little test. So the next page in your book is a test. So this is página nueve. So I want to see if you can do this on your own. So we'll go through it, see if you can figure out the right answer, and then we'll go and um, talk about which ones are the right ones. So, picture number one, they ask us to encierra en un círculo el dibujo correcto. We want to circle the correct picture. So, which picture are the people saying hola? Picture number one, picture number two, or picture number three? Which ones do you think they're saying hola? I think only this second picture because they're facing each other. All the other ones they look like they're saying adios because they're walking away, but in this picture they're looking at each other and they might be saying hola, como te llamas in that picture. How about adios? Which picture is um, a person saying adios? I think Picture number one, right? Looks like she's turning away from the bird saying, Adios, Macayo. See? In the second picture, she looks like she's saying, Yo me llamo. And in the third picture, they look like they're saying hi and introducing themselves. Okay, how about picture number three? Which one is a picture of La Señora? La Señora. Is it a boy or a girl? Yep. Señora ends with A, so that makes it a girl word. Which one is el papá? El papá. Yep, it's dad. Remember, don't call him papá. He's not a potato. We're going to call him el papá. El papá. Perfecto. Which one is a picture of los amigos? Los amigos. So pay close attention to what's at the end. It has an S on it, so that means what? It has to be more than one person, so it can't be the last picture. And then we look at the next letter, it has an O. So is it two boys or two girls? Two boys. Los amigos. Los amigos. Muy bien. Which of these words empieza con A? We're looking for a word that starts with A. Árbol starts with A. ¿Cuál palabra empieza con E? Which of these words starts with E? Espejo starts with E. And which of these words starts with I? ¿Cuál palabra empieza con I? Iglu. Muy bien. And that brings us to the end of our first unit about Honduras. So we've learned lots of things in this chapter. A lot of easy words, but a lot of important things to keep in mind, like if we're talking about boy words, it ends in O, and if we're talking about girl words, it ends in A. If we're talking about one thing, something singular, we have no S, but if we're talking about many things, something plural, then we have to add an S. And we make those changes to all the words, not just the one thing we're talking about. So remember we had la isla es bonita, but las playas son bonitas. That's a really important thing. Seems kind of easy, but really, really important that we make those agreements. We make everything match in our sentence. We learn lots of vocabulary words like hermano, hermana, mamá, papá, amigo, amiga, abuelo, abuela, la familia, hola, adiós, 
¿Cómo te llamas? Me llamo. La isla, la playa, bonita, divertida. Lots and lots of vocabulary. So keep practicing all those words. You can go back, watch the videos again. You can play the games lots of times to help you remember. Don't forget to record me a Flipgrid video so I can hear your voice saying these words in Spanish. I want to be able to hear you say those vowel sounds correctly. A, E, I. Okay, so lots and lots of practice. And next time, we'll be learning about a brand new country. So, hasta luego. Ciao.